Welcome back to Tiny Tent Show, the cold weather version of our warm weather time under canvas together. Tonight we revisit a show that debuted in the summer of 2021, Dear Earth, a love song letter of hope. This program, designed by Ed Willett and Betty Ferris, pulls original music from the deep creative well of BCO songwriters and ignites the Blue Canvas Orchestra and singers in song stories of inspiration, courage, and perseverance. Tonight, you'll be joining the cast as they celebrate the fascinating and unexpected tales of some of the game-changing thinkers, authors, and conservationists from Wisconsin and beyond. Among the many stories contained in this multimedia concert, a well-deserved spotlight is shown on our state's own Gaylord Nelson, the happy boy from Clear Lake, Wisconsin, who grew up to birth the grand idea of a nationwide environmental teach-in a day still celebrated each April 22nd around the world as Earth Day. Happy is the lark, happy is the clam, happy is the clear lake boy, summer toes in the clear lake sand, running through the fields with his best old friend. Happy is the clear lake boy with the soul in the clear lake man. Clear Lake Man Happy was 
the name they gave him. It was written on his face. And he and the band of angels, they had a brother to place. Might have been the ruler, I took the food, but there was no disgrace. It's just the way the big wheel rolls. And he could run with the wild things, step into the ground. In this strange and precious place we call home One day in 26 his dad cranked up the Model T And he and half drove the long dirt road to the whistle stop at Amory To hear young Bob speak about the way things are to be And the way he thought the big wheel rolled And could you ever see yourself in politics someday In this strange and precious place we call home Once upon a time when the earth was flat you could sail a boat right off the map. But careful observations changed the world's view, except for the minds of a stubborn few. Pythagoras knew that the world was round around 507 BC. Anaxagoras and the other geeks in town said we all agree. Aristotle hit the throttle when he said, have a thought, I'll bet you anything that hurts the sphere. But now there's some who don't believe it, they're unable to perceive it, and they holler out in fear. It's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh my. It's just too much to grasp for me, it's blasphemy, oh my. Aristarchus was the first to claim the earth moves around the sun. Galileo and Copernicus said the same, now the battle had begun. The Romans had an inquisition and they came to this decision. Philip Bruno's news was fake. They labeled him a light with it, fly into fire, and they burned him at the stake. And it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh my. That's just the way it has to be. It's blasphemy, oh my. Inconvenient truth is found, it's hostily received. The status quo becomes unwound, and they think they've been deceived. But soon it's common knowledge, it's taught in every college, and it's obvious to all. But when the scientists persisted, the naysayers resisted, and they hollered out this call. But it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh my. You haven't heard the last of me, it's, it's blasphemy, blasphemy, oh my. Well, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh my. It's just some more hot gas for me, one last dying gas for me. It's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh. <laughs> the wealth of the nation is its air, water, soil, forests, minerals, rivers, lakes, oceans, scenic beauty wildlife habitats, and biodiversity. That's all there is. That's the whole economy. 
That's where all the economic activity and jobs come from. These biological systems are the sustaining wealth of the world. Anything else you're interested in is not going to happen if you can't breathe the air and drink the water. Don't sit this one out. Do something. Dear John, it's been months since I've seen your face. It was time to send you back to the mountain. There you will find your place. You know I read your letters and marveled at the beauty and elegance. Always keep fighting for good in this world. Always find your way home to Martinez. These temple destroyers, devotees of ravishing commercialism, seem to have a perfect contempt for nature. And instead of lifting their eyes to the mountains, lift them to dams and town skyscrapers. As well dam for water tanks, the people's cathedrals and churches. For no holier temple has ever been consecrated by the heart of man. the land, conservation lacks meaning or purpose. For only in a deep and inherent feeling for the land can there be dedication in preserving it. If we can change our priorities, achieve balance and understanding in our roles as human beings in a complex world, the coming era can well be that of a richer civilization, not its end. Your words pierce it 
darkest soul they are my happiness those who dwell among the beauties and mysteries of the earth are never alone or weary of life the more clearly we can focus our attention on the wonders and realities of the universe the less taste we shall have for destruction in every outthrust headland in every curving beach in every grain of sand there is the story of the earth When sperm whales need a nap, they take a deep breath, dive down about 45 feet, and arrange themselves into perfectly level vertical patterns to sleep soundly in pods of five or six whales. The tongue of a blue whale can weigh as much as an adult female elephant, and their hearts can weigh as much as a car. Humpback whales are the acrobats and singers of the sea. Recordings of their songs are on the Voyager's golden records, which continue to sail even further out into interstellar space.
water mother, you are wet. From your own creation, hear us yelling from the rocks of the mountains. We who whisper in the ocean fog pray. Let the warm rain speak fire and land. The gray whales swimming in the sea. The gray whales swimming in the sea. The gray whales swimming in the Oh, thanks. That was the first movement of
being here. We're going to take a little break. We'll see you in just 15 minutes. Thanks so much. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's life may be, I go down where the wood drake rests in his beauty in the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water, and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Put it away forever, stay, let it lay as a wilderness. Put it away forever, stay, let it lay as a wilderness. Put it away forever, stay, let it lay as a wilderness. Put it away forever, stay, let it lay.
Tribune. Well, putting this show together, um, uh, Betty Ferris and I had many meetings and talked about many things and had a lot of good munchies and, and screwed around a lot. But we had a good time and we did some work and, and part of that work was to decide who we wanted to invite to write tunes for this. And uh, you heard Randy's tune, Blasphemy, that was written just for this show. And um, yeah, yeah I know. Why else he goes, why else would I write that tune? Yeah. No, that's true. I feel that really good about that though. We brought that tune. That's a hell of a tune, man. Yeah. All right, and where I'm going with this is the next tune um, is by Corey Carlson. We asked Corey to um, write a tune for this. And this is uh, Everybody Comes From Somewhere. And, and we gave them very little direction on it. One of the directives was uh, if he could talk about how we're all from the same stuff, we're all stardust, we're so related, it's ridiculous. We got this, we're the same material. So this is what he came up with. Somewhere. 
Our summer spotlight tonight shines back to a performance by Martha Redbone, the native and African-American vocalist, songwriter, composer, and educator. She's known for her unique gumbo of folk, blues, and gospel from her childhood in Harlan County, Kentucky, infused with the eclectic grit of a pre-gentrified Brooklyn. It's such an honor to be here. I'm so grateful. Um, you know, the kind of year this has been for musicians. Um, we watched everything disappear, our kind of, you know, world just wipe away. And the work that we do really demands the gathering of peoples. So to have that stripped away and down to a screen is no bueno. <laughs> <coughs> Martha Redbone, you look black to me. Yeah, you light skinned it, 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 but you black. I 
can see you got Indian all up in your face. You got good hair, you look Indian, but girl, you got a nigga nose. Are you one of them Puerto Ricans? I like the exotic ladies, you know? You look just like one of them Aborigines and Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> you look lumpy, but we're the ones who got the hair. So you know, you're gonna have to choose which road to walk. Yeah, you know, you can't be both. As far as I'm concerned, you are invalid as a black person, compared to me, of course. Light-skinned blacks are always trying to claim they're Indian. Wait, don't tell me. Your great-great-great-great-grandmother was a Cherokee princess, right? Oh, your mother really is Indian? Oh, my bad. What? Red Indians are still alive? You gotta be joking. What's your blood quantum, hey? You're black and Indian? Jeez, talk about starting out in the world with two strikes against you. These, and one last one. Hey, is that Chinese lady your mother? <laughs> These are just a few of the actual comments made to me throughout my entire life. Some of you might even be thinking some of these same thoughts right here, right now. I can tell you the name. She can tell you the name. I can tell you the place. She, she can, can tell, tell you the place. place. Even the date. She can tell you the date. I can write a book. She can write a book. just going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you about an all-American girl. A girl hewn from the very land itself. Really, the most all-American girl you could find. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you a story about my family. Our family kind of just like mine. Of the land. We are black, brought to work. We are white, rose with hope. We're all mixed up. But not confused. We're Cherokee people, Anichishkawa people, Bird Clan. From Harlan County, Kentucky. That's Appalachia. In our peaceful little world of Appalachia
could see what everybody was up to in the camp. Oh, a camp? It's a mine in town, a coal mine in town. My grandma Easter always called it a camp. Yeah, sitting up here on my grandma's porch, we could see who was coming in and who was riding out. We could see whose wife was with whose husband. Like when Miss Trailer, she was tipping up with Reverend North, going off across to that motel in Big Stone Gap. We saw her duck down under the Reverend's big blue coat when they were coming around the bend. Well, it looked a lot bigger than just a pile of laundry sitting beside him. We could see it all from our top step porch. My grandma Easter, she was looking too. She could see it from the porch, but she would just be sweeping away with her broom because it wasn't good favor being nosy. My grandma Easter. Seems all stories about Indians start with a grandmother or a great grandmother because Everybody has a great grandmother who's full blooded Cherokee. Well, in order to understand my Grandma Easter now, we're going to take this story back. Back into the world Grandma Easter's mama, my great grandma Liza, was born into. Everyone in the camp knew great grandma Liza. She went way back to when Indians lived throughout all those mountains. When she gave you the eye, it was so cold, even Satan needed a fur coat. But really, mostly she just sat up on that porch dreaming about the old time powwows. My great grandmother, Liza dreamed about the stories her parents told her. Stories from way before the long walk. You all probably heard the story about the Trail of Tears. Well, back home, we call it the long walk. If we even learn the history, they like to tell us that after the Indian Removal Act, that all Indians were gone. But that's not quite what happened. When we were forced to move from our homes, some of our people ran into those hills. My great grandma Liza's way back grandmother was among those who fled. Still lay low in the cool of the earth. A 
child aching for the chance to breathe Her little grieving heart pounded just like our drum As she watched all our Cherokees go And gone was our Cherokee home And still family was one of the ones who made it back from the long walk. We're so glad you could join us again this week, and we look forward to you joining us again next week for Anishinaabe Dibajimowin, an Ojibwa story. As always, we thank our sponsors, Jim and Joy Perry, Roger and Sharon Shaver, Dick and Sandy Olson, Patrick and Mary Lou Urban, Myra Ainer. Thank you, sponsors. And with that, I say not goodbye, but instead what they always say where I'm from, which is, well, I suppose. Pythagoras knew that the world was round around 507 BC. Anaxagoras and the other geeks in town said, we all agree. Aristotle hit the throttle when he said, have a thought, I'll bet you anything that hurts the sphere. But now there's some who don't believe it, they're unable to perceive it, and they holler out in fear. It's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, it's blasphemy, oh my. It's just too much to grasp for me, it's blasphemy, oh my.